The Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game first hit international markets in 2002, and it all started with the iconic base set, Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. This set is historic. It introduced a ton of fan favorite cards, and I've got a lot of fond memories for it. I'd also argue that it is the worst base set in trading card game history. Or at the very least, it's the least complex. Legend of Blue Eyes has 126 cards. Almost 70% of these are monster cards. Out of those 87 creatures, only five of them have a bonus effect. The other 80 other creatures in this set are bland, vanilla, raw value creatures with no relevant game text outside of their level, their attack, and their defense. And even among the remaining 39 spell and trap cards, 15 of them are an equipped spell that have the exact same effect for different monster types. I could go on about this set, but in general, I just want to stress that Yu-Gi-Oh! began as a very basic card game. For fun, I tallied up the effect text of every single card in this set, ignoring flavor text and assigning two for each of the non-effect fusion monsters. In the end, because of the massive amount of normal monsters with zero effect text, Legend of Blue Eyes averages just six words of effect text per card. The longest is Swords of Revealing Light, which at this time of printing had 47. Where am I going with this? Here's a structure deck that came out just this year. Order of the Spellcasters. Oh heck yeah, I liked Dark Magician growing up. I like Spellcasters. This guy looks like a boss. Wonder what he does. Uh Yu-Gi-Oh card text is out of control. How did this happen? Let's talk about it. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, one of the biggest mobile role-playing games of 2019, and it's totally free. Currently, almost 10 million users have joined Raid over the last six months. It's one of the most impressive games in its class, with detailed models, environments, and smooth 60 frames per second animations. All the champions in the game can be customized with unique gear that changes your strategic buffs and abilities. The dungeon bosses have some ridiculous skills of their own, and figuring out the perfect party and strategy to overtake them is a lot of fun. Currently, with over 300,000 reviews, Raid has almost a perfect score on the Play Store. The community is growing fast, and the highly anticipated new Faction Wars feature is now live. You might even find my squad out there in the arena. It's easier to start now than ever with Raid's program for new players. You get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days that you play in the game. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Endymion, the mighty master of magic, man, that's even its name is a mouthful, is as far as I know, the card with the most text on it in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Now, part of the insanity is that Endymion is a pendulum monster, which means that it can be played as either a spell or a monster effect. Pendulum monster cards have a lot of extra info because they do so much. With a top effect of 73 words and a bottom effect of 108, this thing is a massive 181 words of effects. Now, I do want to mention that having a complex card with a lot of text isn't automatically a bad thing. I think I'd rather have a game that's too complex over one that's too simple. However, there's got to be a line in the sand somewhere where too much is just too much. At this stage, Yu-Gi-Oh! has gone in so deep that I think it actively damages the accessibility of its game. The average human speaks at about 100 to 130 words per minute. Simply speaking, this one card's info will take you over a minute, assuming you aren't trying to rap god it. The average adult reads at a speed of around 300 words per minute, with decent comprehension. So theoretically, picking this card up and reading it for the first time could realistically take you more than half a minute. And a final problem I have from an accessibility standpoint is the font size. Yu-Gi-Oh cards are already slightly smaller than other major card games like Pokemon and Magic, so they have less real estate to work with. Font size is typically determined by the point, a unit of measurement for the max height of a typed letter. One point of font size is equivalent to 1 72nd of an inch. Many cite 6 point font as the absolute smallest they would recommend for physical print. Old phone books, for example, use a six-point font specifically crafted for high readability at a small size called Bell Centennial. I went ahead and digitally measured a scan of the pendulum text for Endymion. The end result? 
1 18th of an inch. Most likely, 4 point font. That is microscopic. Like, you see that D? That a little D. I also want to point out that this dude is the face of a structure deck. Ages six and up, baby. This type of product usually serves as an entry level way for players to learn the game before jumping into the real thing. For competitive players, Yu-Gi-Oh structure decks are typically a great value in terms of getting good cards in bulk for cheap. And Demian's actually a decent archetype and decks built around its core have had solid success over the last year usually for less $50 bills than the average cost of its competition as well. That said, I just don't think I could give this to somebody trying to learn Yu-Gi-Oh for the first time. And Demian is big, but it's not just him. He brought some friends too. Boom, 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 boom. All cards with over a hundred words to read. What do these Endymion guys even do? To sum it up in as few words as I can, things with spell counters. They drop counters down, pick them up, drop them down, remove them, destroy stuff, summon stuff, negate stuff, prevent stuff, search the deck for stuff. The problem is that all these cards do all of those things with different parameters for how or when you can even do it. Look at all these clauses and order of operations. I feel like I'm doing freaking tax law over here. I wouldn't even say Endymion is close to the most complicated archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh, but they definitely assault your eyes harder than anything I've ever seen before. This much text is insane. I tried to dig up any reason I could to figure out how and why this happened, and here's what I've got. You know how most speedrunners of text-heavy games opt to play a game in Japanese in order to minimize the amount of text characters you scroll through on the screen? Well, the same thing is sort of true with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The English Endymion has 181 words, but almost 1,000 individual characters to fill those words. The Japanese version, on the other hand, has just under 400 total characters in its effect text. According to this article from wokarukoto.com, someone accustomed to reading books can typically read Japanese at a thousand or more characters per minute, which definitely does cut down the reading and comprehension time when compared to the English translations. Also, Japan technically plays on a different version of Yu-Gi-Oh called the Official Card Game, or OCG. One big helpful difference I've seen on OCG cards is that each card has these little numbers to designate the start of a new effect or rule on a single card. Visually, I think this helps cut a massive intimidating block of text like this down into slightly more digestible chunks. This is the big one. Cards like Pokemon, Magic, Hearthstone, they all typically use rotations for their main tournament play, limiting your legal card pool to just a handful of the most recent sets. For Yu-Gi-Oh, every single era of card is legal for competitive play. While there is a constantly evolving ban list that tells you dozens of cards you cannot use or cards that are limited, you can still play cards that have been printed from over the last 17 years. Yu-Gi-Oh! just recently celebrated 10,000 unique cards printed, which means every time they print a new set, they need to find a new unique way to make these cards seem worthwhile when compared to the 10,000 cards that are already out there. While pure power creep is always an option, and we talked about that a bit in our Pokemon HP video, Yu-Gi-Oh! tends to go along the route of feature creep instead. New cards might not get significantly bigger numbers, but they are getting significantly bigger text to accommodate the growing list of new features and styles of play. Remember how we talked about Legend of Blue Eyes being composed of mostly zero effect normal monsters? Those type of cards are very rare today. Over the last three 100 card English Yu-Gi-Oh sets, we got one normal monster. My structure deck doesn't even have any. Almost everything has an effect these days. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a shonen manga that eventually became about protagonists trying to outwit each other through giant magical monsters contained within cards. These characters and monster cards were not originally written with a trading card game in mind. From a story perspective, creatures like the original boss monster Relinquished were complex because they served as an impossible obstacle for our main character to overcome. When we're watching the show, we don't have to sit and read all these card effects at once. We get that information spoon-fed to us one effect at a time from two adults yelling at each other over a children's card game. But when you take all those rules and story twists and translate them into a card, it can get a little nuts. That original Relinquished had a whopping 103 words of text in it. 
It was the OG ridiculous amount of text on a card card. Another huge boss monster in the show, the Winged Dragon of Ra, had so many forms and abilities that they couldn't even put it all into one card, and they ended up splitting it into multiple separate forms. Even though this trend started earlier in the show, the concept of big crazy cards continues to this day. Many of them built to tell a dramatic story in the show, which then translates to the card game. And finally, a big thing that Magic the Gathering does to abbreviate similar effects is using keywords. You'll see this with cards that have just one word in the effect box. Words like flying, vigilance, and lifelink. On its own, a new player might look at these words and be incredibly confused. One of the first things you'll do in Magic is start memorizing this big list of evergreen keywords to catch up. And while this mechanic is annoying for a newer player, it saves a ton of real estate on the card text box and makes life a lot easier for a longtime player. Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't a game built around keywords at all. To quote Yu-Gi-Oh!'s head of development, Kevin Tuard, in 2011, we've always avoided making cards sound too technical. If we write the cards in geek speak so you need a user manual to decipher them, that's not much fun. It would feel less like a game and more like you're taking a test or visiting the DMV. So as much as we can, we've always written cards the same way that plain folks talk. Every once in a blue moon, Yu-Gi-Oh! has simplified some things. Keywords like piercing and banished finally appeared after years of similar effects being passed down on creatures. Alongside that quote from 2011 came the rollout of Problem Solving Card Text, or PSCT. This system was rolled out as a way to more logically structure the way that Yu-Gi-Oh card effects are written and solved. These rule rewrites have actually helped reduce needless clutter. For example, with Relinquished, the newest printing of the card is down to just 74 words from the original 103. And in reality, the gap is even bigger than that, because the original Relinquished also had so many words, it didn't even have text for its summoning condition. But all that said, you can have all the reasonable logic in the world, but I am still always going to look at cards like this and this and this and this and think to myself, damn, that is an unreasonable amount of tiny text. Whether it's new features, cool anime stories, or just not having the keywords, the fact stands. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a crazy and occasionally unhinged card game. The barrier to entry and understanding everything is high, but once you've climbed that wall, there is truly not another card game like it. I'm still always gonna roll my eyes when I come across a new wall of text while playing through the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, but putting together the puzzle of how each and every card works is sometimes actually fun. Borderline masochistic, but still fun.